Hi there, welcome to the 12 days of Copilot. And for our first day of Copilot, our AI is gonna to give to us a little bit of Outlook action. So as you know, Microsoft 365 Copilot is phenomenal for generative AI capability as an assistant to the user at their behest. Pops up, we're popping it up in so many applications and we're gonna start off today with Outlook because that's an application that I know a lot of you spend a lot of time in. So let's get some help from our AI and let's take a look at that. So we're gonna come on over here and you will note that I am in the new Outlook. So I've started a new email in the new Outlook. It's not classic. We've announced that it is coming to classic as well. Uh, but today it's in the new Outlook and in the web-based version, right? So you can go to your uh, browser version or you can have the new Outlook on your desktop and you can work then with the generative capabilities of Microsoft 365 Copilot. So let's take a look. I'm gonna be staring at the screen over here. It looks like I'm looking off a little bit, but here you can see we have you know, our typical, it's already filled it with my email. I have my two and my you know, uh, CC, I can add a subject, but as I come down into the body, something a little new here, you'll see it says type a forward slash to draft with Copilot. It's also a clickable link to draft with Copilot right there. Finally, because we're doing all of this in the flow of work, trying to make it as easy for users to intuitively access it, we also have up in the task bar, you can see here is Copilot and I can get coaching or draft with Copilot. So let's go ahead, we're gonna select draft with Copilot and it's gonna give us then this dialog box and it asks us to go ahead and says, what do you want this email to say? So I've already pre-typed and this is gonna be a recurring theme that I'm going to use um, because we're gonna see how it shows up in different applications as Copilot is contextually aware. In this case, it understands we're doing an email. We are not drafting war and peace here. Um, we're doing an email where we're gonna start a conversation. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in. And it says, tell a customer, Janice, so I'm personalizing it, how Microsoft 365 Copilot and the Microsoft Viva Suite reduce employee burnout while increasing employee job satisfaction and increasing employee job retention. Both hot topics on a lot of C-suite minds these days with all the challenges that we're seeing in various uh, verticals, including the one I work in, healthcare and life sciences. And so uh, I can go ahead and I could click generate here, but I also have some options. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that generation options. Let's take a look. So the first thing I can change is the tone of the email. Very important. If I know somebody well, then I'm gonna have a casual tone probably, right? But if I don't, I want, might want it to be direct or neutral. I could make it very formal and business, you know, formal-like. Um, they have make it a poem, I'm not sure why, uh, other than if you've seen our language packs, you'll know that Klingon is a language pack uh, in the Microsoft suite. And I think some of the people there came over here. It does do a very nice job of making a poem. I will say that. So, you know, if you're, they bring some of that personalization, um, have some fun with colleagues uh, piece in there. Uh, but certainly this is all about business. So, you know, the ones really that I'm concerned with, direct, neutral, casual, formal, I'm gonna select casual because I've known Jan this Janice. I don't really know a Janice, but we're gonna select that because, you know, in our, uh, scenario here. We've known her, worked with her uh, as a customer for a number of years. And then I can pick a length, short, medium, and long. Keep in mind, it's relative, right? This is all relative. And you're going to want to check out things and try some of this on your own to see what's going to work best for you in different contexts. Um, in this case, when I select long, again, I'm not doing a Word document. We're going to do that on another day. We're not doing a Word doc here. We're gonna go ahead and select long because I want a fairly substantial answer. And then uh, now that we have that, before I click generate uh, the message here, something to keep in mind. First of all, 
This is working off of my data or my organizational data, right? So this is looking at the Microsoft graph for Microsoft 365 and looking at the data in there, in that piece and what I have access to. So it's only going to generate a response back based upon the information I have access to. It will security trim the rest just like we do today with search, right? We do that today in search with uh, Microsoft 365, we security trim. We're gonna do the same here. So your data is only gonna be the, it's only gonna pull back information you have access to. It's only looking at your data. This is not looking to other systems, you know, like your EMR uh, system or anything else out there, unless you specifically connect it for the express purpose of leveraging that in here. But out of the box, no, it's your data. And again, security trimmed only on the data I have access to. Um, also, then when I uh, go ahead and click generate, it's gonna go through and there's a whole bunch we could go through with uh, architecture. We're not gonna do that here. I'll supply some links that you can check out. But you can see that your data is safe. Uh, everything stays within the Microsoft 365 trust boundaries. Your data never leaves your tenant. All of it's all good. So this is meeting full compliance. Everything that you have today around security access and compliance stays as is. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's select generate. It's going out now with that prompt. It's taking a look at things. Um, again, all of it's staying here. The large language model that it's leveraging is in that Microsoft 365 trust boundary and locked. And it's gone ahead and I have a couple of options. First of all, it gives me a little uh, learn more about transparency, but it says AI generated content may be incorrect. It's only as good as your data. However, it is your data, right? So in this case, we've done a lot around this particular topic. If I was dealing with a hospital, they probably don't have a lot in their Microsoft 365 around the same topic, but they would have lots of other things like, you know, sterilization procedures and things of that nature that they want to inform people of. So you could go ahead and do that. You can also give it a rating up or down and then give some verbiage and feedback to Microsoft. It says anything you'd like to change. So if I want to change something, I could go ahead, type that in and then go ahead and push that out and have that selected and have it iterate on it. I can select keep it, which we're gonna, I can discard or I can click regenerate. Why regenerate? Well, this is generative AI and it's not just looking data up, it's composing it into that generative response. So maybe I want it to change up kind of how it's saying things. I can go ahead, click regenerate, and it'll give me another variation based off of the same data and information, but format it and structure it a little bit differently. However, in this case, we're gonna go ahead, select keep it. I'm gonna go ahead and enlarge this to make this a little easier for everybody to see. There we go. And you can see it's done a nice job. First of all, it opens up. Hi, Janice. I hope this email finds you well and that you're enjoying your day. I'm writing to you as a principal technical specialist. It actually pulled my job title from here at Microsoft and put that in. And uh, I could, you know, maybe I don't want that in there. I could just pull that out. I want to tell you about some amazing products and how they can help you and your team work better and happier. And then it goes into explaining based upon that data, short and concise for an email. So again, I said it's all relative, right? This isn't a Word doc, it's an email. And then at the end, I look forward to hearing from you soon. Best regards, Michael Giannotti. Keeping in mind that as it's assisted me, think of the time savings that we have right here, right? But just as if I went to my admin sitting, you know, if I'm sitting here in an office, I have an admin sitting outside my office, um, and I went to my admin and said, hey, could you look up the following and do, and they drafted me something. I'm going to take a look at that information. I'm going to review it, edit where necessary, maybe add to and amplify it, because this is a first draft. 
Again, I'm going to say that again. This is a first draft. It's not meant to be the final draft because when all is said and done, when I send this email, it's not saying sent by Microsoft 365 Copilot, just like it's not saying that Dan, my admin, it's not sent by Dan, the admin, uh, in, on behalf of Michael Gennady. Instead, it's going to say it's from me. I'm on the hook for the information. It's great time saver, but I still need to do my due diligence, right? And again, that's why we call it a co-pilot and not the pilot. This is an autopilot. This is co-pilot. It's assisting me at my behest. So I go through, I can make my edits, you know, hey, I'm right. I don't like that. Um, so I'm just going to go get rid of that. Boom. And uh, now I'm ready to send it, right? For me. Um, but it's done this great job putting it all together. I can then, you know, when they reply to me, I can uh, continue to use AI in a back and forth response as needed or not. But it's always there readily at my fingertips in the flow of work to invoke. So Copilot and Outlook can save you a lot of time. You can also, as you learn, one of the things you'll find out is learning how to draft your prompt to get you the information you want. That is really this new area of work and kind of a computer science that we're all going to need to learn about and improve because the better the prompt, the better the response, as well as the better the data, the better the response. So that's Copilot, Microsoft 365 Copilot in Outlook. Exact same experience if you went to the web-based version and pulled that up. Uh, it's all right there in the flow of work. It's there to make your job better, make it easier so you can focus on the tasks that you need to, that are more important than the quick emails, you know, that you need to shoot off and send out. Let it help you, let it help you get your job done and improve employee retention because you're gonna get better job satisfaction. If I'm not doing as much busy work and I'm doing more meaningful activities within the org, more strategic, let Copilot be your assistance to free up that time. With that, this is Mike Gennady telling you the 12 days of Copilot. This is day number one and our AI sent to us, Copilot and Outlook. Have a great day, take care, and until tomorrow, ciao.